up next on an all-new Power Rangers Wild Force. A real ding -a -ling is polluting nature with noise. <laughs> What's up, Tadpoles? Welcome to the Lily Pad, the hoppinest place to be. I'm Frogs Cure Cancer, and if you know me or have seen any of my previous content, then you know it's no surprise that I love Power Rangers. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk Toku. My name is Frog. Power Rangers. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. Yo, I love Power Rangers as much as I love stubbing my own toe. Wow. Growing up, I was obsessed with Power Rangers. Honestly, I'm still obsessed with them to this day. I still buy the toys. I still watch the shows. I rewatch the movies every now and then. It's still got a grasp on my life. My tastes have changed a little bit. I'm an adult now, though. I'm not a kid. Things have changed. I've grown up. When I was a kid, I loved this show for the fighting and the giant robots. Nowadays, I appreciate it more for the art of the practical effects, the craftsmanship of the stunts people and for the fighting and the giant robots. August 28th, 1993, the year of our Lord. Kids all across America were graced with the first episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. If you didn't know, Power Rangers is based on a series in Japan called Super Sentai. It's been airing since the 70s with Himitsu Sentai Gorenja. I bet I know what you're thinking. 70s? We didn't even get Power Rangers until 1993. I know, right? I think we missed a few teams. <laughs> And you know what? It was the first of its kind. It didn't necessarily have its bearings quite yet. We didn't have the Sentai Power Ranger formula with the giant mech battles and kaiju. You could thank Spider-Man for that. It was actually really goofy. Instead of a giant robot, all we had was a rugby ball and a dump truck. Okay. So it only makes sense that when we got Power Rangers, we didn't start with the beginning. We actually got Japan's 15th series. It's the craziest thing. All they did was bring over Japanese footage and just dub over it. And then for the parts when they weren't in suits, they just filmed that at a park or at some high school. It took time for Super Sentai to figure it out. By the time we got it in the United States, they already had the formula set. We had the iconic mech battles and Monster of the Week. We're here to toss your salad. Hey, yo, Power Rangers, where's the gabagool? It doesn't matter what season of Power Rangers it was, even if I didn't really care for it, there was always one thing that always got me hyped. It was the team-up episodes. The team-up episodes were always the dopest thing. We got Thunderstorm, To the 10th Power and the Power of Pink, Trakina's Revenge, Legendary Battle, Once a Ranger. You know I was there. There was even some wacky crossovers, like the time the Power Rangers met the Ninja Turtles. But... Most people don't like to talk about that. I do, though. You can talk to me about it. Yo, hit me up in the comments about that episode if you saw it. Let me know what you think. We cannot talk about Power Rangers team-ups without talking about one of the most entertaining team-ups of all time. For the first time ever, all ten Red Rangers from all ten seasons will team up to save the world on Power Rangers Wild Force. Your world is doomed. We're not going to let you bring back Strip and Terra. Let's do it, guys. Morphin Top, one up power. Hold up. Forever Red, a special new Power Rangers Wild Force coming up next on ABC Family. That's right, we talking about Forever Red, baby. When I was a kid, I actually had this episode on a Best of Power Rangers DVD. And as an adult, I bought it. Thank you. To be honest, I didn't realize until I was an adult that this is just a normal ass episode of Power Rangers Wild Force. You know, it probably didn't help that I had this on a DVD, but I really thought this was a movie. Not to mention, I do remember all of the promos for this special on TV, and they really hyped this up to be like the Marvel crossover event of the century, but for Power Rangers. This is like Power Rangers Endgame level shenanigans. We're talking we're talking about we're talking about the Power Rangers. The Power Rangers did it before the Expendables, okay? Based on Hyakuji Sentai Gaurenja, Power Rangers Wild Force served as the 10th season of Power Rangers. So it only makes sense that Forever Red serves as the series' 10th anniversary special. Wild Force was a busy season. This was the last season produced by Saban because the franchise had been bought by Disney. So they stopped airing it on Fox and moved it over to ABC Family. Meanwhile in Japan... Who was celebrating? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile in Japan, Gal Ranger was celebrating Super Sentai's 25th anniversary with Gal Ranger vs. Super Sentai. It sucks. Tyrannosaurus! What's up, y'all? It's Frogs from the Future. Um, so I just.
started off by saying that the 25th anniversary special of Sentai sucks. Let me elaborate a little more. This is one of the few instances where I think the fandom can all equally agree that Forever Red is the better anniversary special. I mean, Super Sentai versus who? Who are we fighting again? Se- su- is it Gal Ranger versus Super Sentai or versus... No, I'm being dead. I actually forgot what the title <laughs> was. I think this is the one time where both the Super Sentai and Power Rangers fandom could agree that Forever Red was just the better anniversary special. Considering that Gal Ranger versus Super Sentai is just a clip show, it's like an hour or something long special with really only 20 minutes, maybe, maybe 20 minutes of actual something different and then 45 minutes of clip show. Yo, let's talk about the plot of Forever Red real quick. These robots are mad and they're trying to revive a robot that'll destroy the oath. So these Beetleborgs, oh, excuse me, I mean Machine Empire. These generals from the fallen, not so fallen, Machine Empire are all upset, so they're trying to dig up Serpentera, which is a super crazy Megazord back from the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger days. Lord Zed was rocking that shit, you know what I'm saying? This episode wastes no time gathering our alumni rangers and getting the plot started. And it makes sense given our 20 minute runtime. To be honest, the moment I realized that I had to make a video about this episode was when they were all in the Kmart brand NASA scene. I mean, so much has happened up until this point and it's only been six minutes. We got Rick Medina's Oscar worthy speech. I don't know much about spaceships or this machine empire, but I will go wherever I must to protect the earth. And that thing they did with TJ. And that's the red turbo ranger. J. Jarvis Johnson. <laughs> Please, just call me TJ. Man, why they keep doing my man TJ like that? Let's do it. Oh, wait. Wasn't there another Red Ranger here on Earth? You're right, Andros. There was another Red Ranger here on Earth. You know, I totally forgot about Rocky, played by Steve Cardenas. I wonder, he'll probably show up. Rocky will probably show up in this episode. You're absolutely correct. Guys. Yo. Wh- Oh, who's this guy? This must be Rocky. Yo, I bet this is Rocky. Jason, you guys weren't going to do this without me, were you? Oh, wait, that's not Rocky. Hold on. Yo, Rocky, why why weren't you in this episode? What happened? Yeah, they reached out to me, and then I'm not sure what happened after that. So um, there must have just been a mix-up. Okay. Because, you know, it was years later, and I had moved around a bit. Maybe they had trouble finding me. I don't know. (laughs) But I guess he couldn't make it. This episode also features some nice cameos from Paul Schreier and Jason Narvey playing Bulk and Skull respectively, as well as some other fun little Power Rangers Easter eggs, like the fact that they were reminiscing about the old days and they were trying to uncover the Power Rangers' secret identities. Why, I even once met Lord Zed and Rita. Yeah? So did I. <laughs> Yo, let's also talk about Club Bulk Meyer. My guy Bulk owns a club. Yo, where the hell was that in Samurai? Bulk Meyer's Bulk speaking. Then there's the chess set from Power Rangers in Space during the Psycho Ranger saga. Speaking of in space, it was really hyped to see the Astro Megaship again. Mark II. I present the Astro Megaship Mark II. Fresh off the construction yards of KO-35. The not Millennium Falcon looking head ass. Especially with all the Red Rangers taking it to the moon and debriefing for the mission ahead. Hell yeah. It's all ready, Tommy. Let's get started. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. I'm a freak, man. Like. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Once we're on the moon, this episode does a great job of highlighting the personality and fighting style of each individual Red Ranger. Our team of Expendables splits up, and we're met with some of the best fight choreography directed by Koichi Sakamoto. And you can tell it all varies from traditional disciplined martial arts and trained military combat. This is all just the build-up 10 years in the making, leading up to one of the most satisfying group morphs and roll calls in Power Ranger history. Once the morphed fight begins, it is so cool to see each Ranger teamed up. Not to mention this fight is complemented so well with some of the best practical effects and stunt work that the series had seen up until this point. We actually had some crazy wire work going on, and on top of that, bullet time. At the time, though, Matrix was still pretty popular. Yo, this moon fight has it all. The banter is on point. Hang back, rookie, and let me show you how it's done. Not to mention, we got this cool knot from TJ over here. He does a spin out. For anybody that watched Turbo, this is like the Megazord's final attack. Do 
These are all high points for the special and for the Power Rangers franchise. That's what makes it so rewatchable 20-something years later. Unfortunately, though, the ending falls a bit flat. General Vengex ended up reviving Serpentera, and it all ended in a deep space CGI battle. See, this is just Bandai trying to sell toys. And I guess it worked. I mean, I get it. He got the Wild Force Rider in the episode previously, in Souls of Humanity. I think I hear that a lot of people are upset that Cole dealt the final blow. Me, personally, I'm not mad about that. I mean, it makes sense. He is the Red Ranger at the time. Care and attention to detail. You can tell that it's present in this special. And now, with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 30th anniversary, once and always, coming out very soon, I'm really excited. I know this special is going to be everything Mighty Morphin Power Ranger fans have always wanted. Can you tell me anything about the Power Rangers 30th anniversary? I cannot. You cannot. <laughs> you can, can you tell us when? It's going to be on April 19th on Netflix. That's all I can tell April you. April 19th on Netflix. Remember, everybody, April 19th on Netflix. Watch Power Rangers 30th anniversary. What's it called again? Uh, Power Rangers Once and Always. Once and Always? Okay. Or Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always, yeah. Watching this episode again as an adult, it made me realize how goofy it all really is. That's not a bad thing, though. I actually enjoy this more now, seeing it with brand new eyes. When I was a kid, I didn't notice Rick Medina's bad acting. Stop! or the fact that Danny Slavin was green screened in. This is still a really badass team up episode for me. That could all be narrowed down to the awesome fight choreography by Koichi Sakamoto, the dope morph sequences, and a little, uh, just, just a little bit, just a hint, just a sprinkle of that good old nostalgia. I was starting to wonder whether you show up at all. You didn't think I was gonna let you do this without the original Red Ranger, did you? Just be a simple question. What was it like filming Forever Red? What was the production like then? Did it hit you up first or? Yeah. 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 So I was actually in the fire department on the East Coast. And uh, I, I can't remember if it was a phone call or an email that I got. But long story short, I ended up calling them and they're like, hey, how would you like to come back and do an episode with all the Red Rangers? And the only ones I knew about at the time after me were Cardenas and, uh, and Frank. So I was like, well, how many of their bed? And they're like, well, there's been 11. I, I thought, what are you guys doing? Killing all the Red Rangers? <laughs> but yeah. how do you get to 11? You're assassinating them? Yeah. So uh, I, I ended up, I went to the chief. I was like, hey, I need uh, three days off to go film. Yeah. And he thought I was kidding, and I wasn't. So I flew to LA. We set up. I got to meet all the new guys. And uh, I kind of I kind of felt like the godfather. You know? yeah. I was walking in the set. It was, but it, it was cool. It was, it was cool. Yeah! I got to admit, you did well, rookie. Yo, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much. Please drop a like, comment, subscribe. It would mean so much to me. I would like to give a shout out and thanks again to Austin St. John and Steve Cardenas for letting me interview them. I'd like to give a shout out to all the tadpoles out there that have been supporting me. Yo, I couldn't have done this without y'all. I would also like to give a shout out to my friends over at Gaming With Dad 206. Emilio, Philippe, thank you guys again so much for hooking it up and letting me use your space as well for my interviews. Yo, please go check me out on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and most importantly, follow me on Twitch. I stream four days a week on Twitch. You can catch me on the lily pad with the tadpoles all the time. Thank you all for coming yeah. to the lily pad. It's the hoppinest place to be. Um, I'm Frog Scare Cancer. Another one straight Peace. off the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm off the top. Hit you with that fucking Power Ranger freestyle today. I'm going off the top, I hit you with that power freestyle collab with Mr. Frogs. Hey, the whole thing's something. They gonna say that I am cringe, but this whole shit jumping. You gonna think that that...